Welcome, welcome. Thank you, family, friends, ladies, and gents for joining me. And what else? Maria loves to talk. And what am I talking about, you guys? What am I doing? This is out of Minnesota House of Representatives. It is current January the 12th, 2023. Proposed office would address disturbing trend of missing, murdered black women and girls. Okay, so here, Ruth, Representative Ruth, Richardson, Mendota Heights says there is an unacceptable crisis in the state's black population and in presenting HF 55 to the House Public Safety Finance and Policy, Richardson cited a long list of reasons why an office for missing and murdered black women and girls is needed. House file 55. And uh, welcome to the committee, Representative Richardson. Um, since you are not on the committee, I will move that House File 55 be recommended to be re-referred to the Committee on Judiciary Finance and Civil Law. Um, and Representative Richardson, I understand that you do have an A2 author's amendment, is that correct? Yes, Madam Chair. All right, great. So there is the A2 amendment. And members, um, we will hear about the amendment. And I'll just remind folks, especially because we have a lot of new people on our committee, that it is customary, custom and usage that we adopt author's amendments typically. That doesn't mean we won't discuss them. That is uh, custom and usage here. Um, Representative Richardson, would you like to go ahead and describe the A2 amendment, please? Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, House File 55, uh, as amended uh, with A2, would establish and maintain an office of missing and murdered black women and girls. As a state and a nation, we're facing an unacceptable crisis of missing and murdered black women and girls, and the data is simply horrific. When we started this legislative work in earnest in 2019, there were an estimated 64,000 to 75,000 missing black women and girls in the United States. What that significant range told us is that we don't even know the full scope of this crisis. In 2020, more than 100,000 black women and girls were reported missing. While black women account for less than 15% of the US population, we make up more than one third of all missing person cases in 2020. Black girls are less likely to receive Amber Alerts and more likely to be classified as runaways they're also less likely to receive media attention and coverage. It's also important to note that missing person cases involving black women and girls stay open four times longer than their white peers. In addition, black women and girls are at increased risk of harm. More than 20% are raped in their lifetime. In Minnesota, where black women make up 7% of the population, we account for more than 40% of the reported domestic violence cases. And to be clear, that's reported cases. I would argue that figure is even higher when you take into account the cases that go unreported. Disparities also abound in human trafficking incidents. A two-year study of human trafficking found that 40% of sex trafficking victims were identified as black women. And what is very chilling is that convicted traffickers admittedly believe that trafficking black women would land them less jail time if caught than trafficking white women. In Minnesota, a black woman, uh, black women are almost three times more likely to die of homicide. Across the US, at least four black women are murdered a day. This reflects, um, and th those uh, numbers are from 2021, and this reflects a 51% increase over 2019, the largest increase of any racial or gender group during that period. Furthermore, the number of unsolved homicide cases of black women rose 89% in 2020 and 2021, compared with 2018 and 2019. Again, a far bigger increase than any other demographic group during this period. This is a crisis and it doesn't have to be this way. Behind these numbers are real people and real families devastated we must do better, we can do better, and black women and girls deserve better. And the community agrees. This office has been vetted with community, with individuals with lived experience, grieving families, the faith community, organizations. 
Richardson also acknowledged the failures of law enforcement to adequately address the violence and trauma disproportionately experienced by black women and girls, which she said has led to a disturbing trend of many families feeling alone as they conduct their own investigations looking for answers. Okay, so she says, managed by the Office of Justice Programs in the Department of Public Safety, duties of the office would include reviewing cold cases of missing black women and girls and death investigation reviews of black women and girls ruled as suicide or an overdose under suspicious circumstances. That's good, that's needed. So then she goes on to say, the bill would appropriate 700,000 in fiscal year 2024 and 650,000 fiscal year 2025 to fund the office. Good, this is similar to the one they had for, I think I saw for Native American women that I did watch my video on Native American women uh, going missing. Uh, also, that it's, it seems similar because their rates is sky high too. Missing, uh, the family's not getting any help, uh, no news coverage. To me, that's the main thing, no news coverage. I don't see the news coverage, no news coverage. So uh, prayers uh, that they are doing that and it needs to be done in those top 10 cities that I named top 10 states, especially down there in Baton Rouge, New Orleans, uh, Chicago. Thank goodness, thank God um, for the people that found the lady that was from San Diego that was missing in Texas, uh, Miss Felicia Johnson, they have found her, uh, this uh, Nigerian guy, Nwudu, or Nwubo, uh, they still, and I'm praying that they will find his butt, uh, that he hadn't ran off to back to Africa, but they found her remains uh, the other day, the um, people cleaning up a park or the highway or some roadway. So prayers go out to her family.